Dr. Kenneth Bloom made headlines in 1990 when he co-discovered the reward gene, DNA, that is sometimes called the pleasure gene. Dr. Bloom is currently a full professor of the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Florida. He's previously taught at Wake Forest and the University of Texas. Dr. John Giordano is the founder of a 62-bed accredited addiction treatment center in Miami-Dade. He attracts celebrities from across the nation with his groundbreaking holistic approach to treating addiction. Their association began when both were searching for the addiction gene. What they found was that the brains of different people process dopamine differently. Studies they conducted suggest the way a brain processes dopamine can help determine if a person is conservative or liberal. Next on Facing Florida, it's not just how you were brought up. My guests for this segment first met as they were seeking the origins of alcoholism and the genetic causes uh, for people that drink too much. So joining me now, Dr. Kenneth Bloom and Dr. John Giord Giordano. Uh, Dr. Bloom, let me start with you. On your way looking to find out what caused alcoholism, you discovered a gene that you think helps determine whether or not you're liberal or conservative. Well, that's, that's exactly, exactly true. Uh, an extension of my research that I did with Ernie Noble at UCLA was done by James Fowler at San Diego. And uh, what was found was very interesting. Number one, it, we've, what was found was that if you carry one form of the gene called the dopamine D2 receptor gene, if you have low dopamine D2 receptors, the, the difference between those people that have the normal complement receptors is that the A1 form, people that carry the A1 form, they don't show up to vote. That's, that's the first thing. They, they, they just don't show up in the polls. Uh, the second thing that's very interesting is that those people that carry the A1 allele compared to the A2 actually have different views. They have a liberal view versus a more conservative view. Furthermore, the attachment to a party, whether it's Democrat or Republican, if you carry the A1 allele, you're not attached to a party as much as if you had the A2, which could be Republican. So, so uh, Dr. Giordano, that actually uh, suggests that, uh, and it seems to bear out that uh, although there are fewer Republicans, they seem tighter knit. Uh, it, it, I was amazed to, to look at this clinically and watch how it, it, it goes into all the research that we've done at our clinic and how they're more risk takers and um, they're not as, uh, they don't buy into spirituality as much. Um, they're not as, uh, they're more flexible in the way they think. They're not as rigid, in a sense. Um, it's just amazing how the correlation between the two. All right, so thinking 1984 and George Orwell, mm -hmm. is it, would it be possible to manipulate these genes to either make more people more conservative or more liberal, or, or am I way out of the box? Well, you're, you're probably not out of the box. Uh, people have actually talked about the fact that the era of politics, in terms of genetically, this certain remedies that may or may not occur. For example, in terms of manipulating the gene, yes, there's ways that we can manipulate the gene. We do that in the world of addiction, okay? We develop uh, methodologies and technologies where we can manipulate the brain chemistry so that, in a sense, even though they got a low uh, dopaminergic receptor, they, in a sense, you can rev that up when we become more normal, normalized. And I'm not trying to say that if you got the A1 in terms of politics, that's really not normal compared to the A2. It's just that they're both different are normal. Views. They're both normal. They're both white. They both have the way they, 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 they look at things. It's, it's, it's what's amazing is that even friendships, friendships in very large networks, has also been found that if you carry the A1, you have more tendency to be friends with an A1. Uh, right, so it's carrier. Uh, you yeah. like people, like-minded people seek each exactly, other. Exactly. And what's very interesting in the clinic, in, in, in the work that, that John's doing in the clinic, what's, what's very interesting, in these large networks, what was found is that those individuals that carry the A1 allele that, in a sense, even marry with people that have the A1 allele, we found that, we found that out and we published on that. 100% in one study, okay, that they marry this A1 allele. Okay. And what's very interesting about that is that these large networks, they also found that that correlates with, guess what? 
alcoholism and obesity. So it's all tied together. Dr. Giordano, let me ask you this question. We have a U.S. Senate candidate who came from, who both parents were liberal Jewish uh, immigrants from New York to Florida, uh, yet he's a conservative Republican. It's not my fault. <laughs> 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 but so there are factors besides There are genetic. social factors. There's a lot of other factors that are involved. We, we see that in our clinic. There's, there's, there's social factors, there's cultural factors. There's a lot of different things, the way you know, people are brought up. So just because you have the A1 variant doesn't mean you're going to exactly be that way or the A2 variant, but it's most likely that you may be, but doesn't mean you have to be. Right. Exactly. And I want to follow back up on that uh, before I let it go too far exactly. about the idea about obesity uh, and particularly, so you may be able to treat that once you know what the DNA is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what we do. And actually we did with John, actually, we did experiments, and we call it, it's a big word, we call it nutrigenomics. So we customize and target these variations with substances that target the genes. And we found that we could actually uh, prevent uh, glucose craving, change the body mass, reduce weight, you know, so that, yes, we can do we, that. We did brain scans. Uh, QEEGs to measure the electrical output of a normal brain and then a brain that was impaired, uh, different parts of the brain, the way it functioned, the functionality of the brain. It was amazing the correlation that we started to see with a lot of other things. So it's, it's really an important finding that Dr. Blum has discovered with the, the, the addiction gene and how it translates out into everything else in the world. And so where do you take this in the future? Well, in my industry, what we want to do is we... Which is we, drug treatment. Which is drug and, alcohol, drug and alcohol treatment, which is becoming very prevalent in all industries, including politics, uh, is to take it with doing gene testing. And we're going to let some people know whether they're mild, moderate, or severe prone to addiction. Or if they have the A1 or the A2 gene. Yeah. And, I, and actually, it's a panel of genes that we developed. We have patents on it panel of genes that are going to give us the very thing that John talked about. You're going to find that, we call it the genetic addiction risk score. You know, so it's, it's kind of interesting. So we can make early interventions. Yeah, proper interventions. And on that note, we are just flat out of time, but uh, Dr. Giordano and Dr. Bloom, thank you so much for being here. It's a very interesting study, and I'd love to have you back sometime. So everyone yeah, else pleasure. stay with us. When we come back, uh, we'll start talking about the earthquake in uh, the Northeast.